Hey, what's up guys? Synapse here. I'm going to show you how to build a badass PC that's great for video editing, gaming, and for scientific purposes. And so in this video, I take you into the lab at University of Arizona. My task was to figure out how to build a computer that was capable of heavy duty data processing. As a video editor and a PC gamer, I knew exactly what to do. The people helping me build this computer are University of Arizona students and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Lucia. I'm Raymond. Veronica. They have no experience building computers and they're gonna be breaking this computer, I mean, building this computer with me. Hopefully they can show you how easy this can actually be. The case is an Antec 1200 V3. It looks really cool and it's got plenty of space the motherboard is going to be a gigabyte. This is a CPU fan, the Noctua NHD14. So I have to make sure the case is big enough to fit this giant thing. The fact is, this thing does just as good on the benchmarks as many popular water cooling systems. The processor is the Intel Core i7 4770K. It's a quad core processor with eight threads. We're going to go with a SSD hard drive. If you guys don't have an SSD hard drive, they will change your computing experience tremendously. 32 gigabytes of rip jaw memory. This is the maximum amount of memory this motherboard can support. I'm gonna go with a GeForce GTX 760. This particular workstation is not gonna be too graphics intensive, but the GTX 760 is a good card and it's gonna scale well. Right now, at this point in time, if you have the extra money, I suggest the 770. It's doing really well. And if you wanna take it up a notch, the 780 is doing great on graphics benchmarks right now. Here's a 750 watt power supply. It's gonna be plenty of power for the CPU and the graphics card, which are gonna be the most power hungry components of the computer. I'll leave links for these at the bottom. You can check them out. Here I'm gonna place the power supply in first. And in this case, the power supply goes at the bottom. The next part I'm gonna put in is the hard drive. I want to get the hard drive in and the power supply in first because once I put the motherboard and the heatsink in, it's going to be much harder to get anything in there. I took out the motherboard and I'm going to place it in the case and I'm just checking to see how well it's going to fit and make sure that all those little lifts are in the right spot so that I can mount the motherboard in the case. So you can see those little gold mounts that are on the case, they're going to prop the motherboard up so that it doesn't make direct contact with the case. And I just have to make sure that there's enough of those and that they're in the right spot. So here's the giant heat sink. All right, this heat sink is pretty big. Um, the pros are that it's gonna keep the CPU cool even if you overclock. But the problem with giant heat sinks like this is you have to consider whether or not it's gonna fit in the case and also fit with the other components of the board got 32 gigabytes of memory that's four sticks of eight gigabytes and I'm gonna stick those in there first because once I get that heatsink on I might have a really hard time getting the memory in I'm gonna have a much easier time if I put the memory in first and then put the heatsink on so those just snap in sometimes installing memory can be a little bit nerve-wracking because when you push it in you can hear the board make a creaking sound and it sounds like you're doing something wrong but that's pretty normal I just brace it underneath, pop those in. Here I install the heatsink. This is somewhat of a specialized heatsink. It's really large. It's really versatile. It works with many different processor sizes. This might be the most difficult part of the install. This is an important step because you gotta keep the CPU cool. This is what the heatsink looks like that comes with the Intel processors. It is puny compared to the massive Noctua. And uh, many computer builders and enthusiasts recommend that you not use the stock cooler and that you actually buy a third party cooler. That's especially important if you want to overclock. Now we definitely want to overclock. So let's install the processor. Here I take the processor out of its case. The processor is probably the smallest component of the computer build. It fits right in the motherboard. If you mount it in wrong, you can actually bend some of the pins on the motherboard and permanently damage both the processor and the motherboard. Luckily, the processor has these little notches on it 
It should only fit in one way and you just drop it in very carefully. It should fall right into place. Just pull the lever over, unlock the processor into place. I'm not going to touch the surface of the processor. I want the surface to remain clean because now I'm going to put some thermal paste on here. And I'm using Noctua's thermal paste, which actually does better on the benchmarks than many popular thermal pastes. Let's check it out. I don't know how much you put on here, you just put a little bit and it's enough. So the heatsink is ready to go on. I want to make sure that it's in the right orientation. I'm thinking about airflow. I want the airflow to actually flow towards the back of the case. With this particular heatsink, you can mount it a few different ways. Here I'm just figuring out which way I want to mount it. My decision is based on airflow. I want the air to flow from the front of the computer and out the back. Now we're going to let Veronica place the motherboard in the case. So right now the motherboard has the memory installed, the processor, and the heatsink. And you also want to make sure that you're, you're well grounded so that you don't short out any electrically sensitive parts of the board. And it's just going to drop right down into the case. We're going to use the screws that came with the motherboard to mount the motherboard to the case. Alright, now for the graphics card. I really like these Gigabyte graphics cards because they have three fans. My experience with Gigabyte has been uh, really good for both ATI and NVIDIA cards. Uh, one of my previous graphics cards had a single fan and the fan failed and there was nothing wrong with the graphics card. It was really difficult, almost impossible to fix the fan, uh, which was a shame. So I wanted to go to this triple fan design, plus it looks really cool. I'm going to plug in the power cords. The motherboard needs to be plugged into the power supply. So does a graphics card, the hard drive. The front panel of the case has a few wires for the power button and the reset button and for front panel USB. All of those need to be plugged into the motherboard. And here Lucia is carefully trying to plug in the rear fans to the motherboard. Turns out those aluminum fins on the heatsink are really sharp. I tricked her into doing that part. Yeah! Here, show it on camera. It's just tiny. <laughs> Good work. Yeah. Pretty much Lucia's a hero now. She bled to build this computer. I think every computer builder has a couple of scars. <laughs> it's pretty normal, but be careful. Alright, so hard part's over. Gotta plug in the monitor, the keyboard, and we're gonna fire it up. I'm not really focused too much on wire management here, although I will tell you a lot of enthusiasts are really particular about wire management. So you can be more careful about that. That's not going to be too important for this. All right, so now everything is in place. The time has come to fire the computer up. We spent a lot of time getting all the parts into the computer, making sure everything is plugged in correctly, trying our hardest not to cut our fingers off or break the computer. Now is the moment of truth. If it turns on, that means we did everything right. But if it doesn't turn on, that means we did something wrong. Victory. All right, I got a little excited there. I'm definitely a computer geek, but I must say that this is one of the more exciting builds that I've done. And it was even more fun because we got to build it as a team. Remember, these guys don't really have too much experience building computers, but they were able to do it. So we're gonna go into the BIOS and this is what the new BIOS looks like. It looks a lot cooler. And we're gonna go ahead and have Marissa overclock this motherboard. She dials in some modest overclocking profile and we're pretty much done. So I'm not gonna show you the installation of the operating system and the software and stuff, but basically what we're gonna do next is load some benchmarking software on here, check the temperatures, make sure everything's built okay. <laughs> I had fun 
and I bled for this computer. You see a bled <laughs> for this <laughs> computer. She's bleeding. There's her blood is in that computer. Making that fan work. <laughs> Have you ever built a computer? No. Never built a computer. Do you, do you think you learned something? I think I learned how to build a computer. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so, um, if you had to build a computer, you think you could do it? Yeah. Every day. You just put the. You just have to put the motherboard in there. You plug the things in, and then. It's and then, I'm good with the motherboard. I got. I got that. She down. did that. And then you press the button, and sometimes the lights come on, sometimes not. But this time it and then did. You just gotta start plugging and unplugging. Yeah. And just check the connection, and then it works. It's and definitely then. not as complicated as I thought it was going to be. No, I don't want to. Okay. Well. <laughs> But so how did you think it was going to be? I definitely thought there were going to be a lot more pieces and stuff, and you ended up just putting one big piece in there and plugging in a few wires. I could yeah, do that, it. Was, that was it. I could build all the supercomputers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, give a like and a share. Leave your questions in the comments. But I have a question for you. If you just built this computer, what is the first thing you would run on it? Alright, thanks for watching everyone, good luck and have fun.